Good morning and welcome to KCC Online. It's great that you could join us today at Nottingley. This week we're going to continue our series all about the church and we're going to be looking at the church as a compassionate people. The church is compassionate. Now there's a story that you can find on the internet. It's a news story, a news clipping, and it's all about some young men who um, worked in a drive through a coffee drive through I don't know about you, but I love to have coffee sometimes. Just go and sit and have coffee in a coffee shop. But during the pandemic, that's not been possible. So I often find myself on the way home from work in the in the in the drive through queue at Starbucks. And it's great. You just drive up, give your order, um, drive through to the hatch, pay, grab your coffee and drive off. Very quick um, and very efficient way of serving coffee. But these young men, they, as one of the cars drove up, drove up they had a queue of cars. And just as one of the que uh, cars queued up and came to the, to the serving hatch, they noticed that this woman was looking quite upset who was in the car that they were serving to. And they asked if she was okay. And this woman responded to say that she just lost her husband and that she was feeling very sad and upset that day. So instantaneously, the two boys, followed by more of their friends who were in serving at that time, put their hands through the hatch, grabbed hold of her hand and started to pray for her. At that moment, that woman needed somebody to connect with her. That woman needed somebody to care. And these young men all together grabbed hold of her hand and pray that, prayed that God would give her peace, that God would give her comfort at this time and to show his love. This woman went away knowing that somebody cared. This woman went away knowing that she was connected to somebody. Now these young men, they saw a need and they had compassion. And they didn't just uh, see the need and feel sorry for the woman. They saw a need and they acted. They responded. They, uh, when, when, they were, when they were questioned in the interview, they said, we just do what we always do. We just love on people. They stepped out of what they were doing for that moment. They had compassion and they met a need. They stopped everything to take care of that woman. You know, they knew how to make coffee. They knew that making coffee was their job and it was their role, but they also connected with the people that they served. And they just said it just kind of happened. It was natural. They saw compassion. It's what they did. And they automatically just prayed. You know, sometimes a smile, sometimes taking that time out can make a massive difference to somebody's life. These young men acted with compassion towards a woman who was in need at that time. When she needed someone to reach out and to care, they were there. Do we always see? You know, it's very easy to get caught up in our everyday lives, in our family, in our job, in our role, in going shopping, in, in, in the day-to-day -day things. You know, you have, you have your order of what you're going to do that day and you can work through it. And it's very easy to get caught up in what you're doing in your life around Sometimes it's very easy to get self-focused. It's only what affects me or my immediate life or my the lives around me, my little circle. And sometimes we can get desensitized to things that are happening around. You know, sometimes there can be so many things thrown at us, even on the news and on the on you know on the on the radio or what we read and and things can be happening. We can get that we can be desensitized to things around us. We can be focused on where we're going and have that one-way tunnel vision and not actually see what is around us. Have you ever been on a car journey and you can't actually quite remember how you got there because you were on autopilot? You know, sometimes it's easy to miss what's out there. If you've ever been on a walk with a small child and just let them walk, it can take you ages because the small children just see everything that's around. They want to stop and they want to see a little flower that they can see in the crack in the wall. They want to step in the puddle and look at their reflection or look at the reflection of the clouds um, in the puddle. They see the little creepy crawlies along the path or they want to walk around the cracks in the pavement. They see things that we miss because we're just focused on the direction 
in where we're going and we miss all these little things that young children are so fascinated in, these little things that are all around us. Sometimes do you ever feel like you walk around with your eyes closed? I remember once when I was um, going on a trip to Scotland, on a road trip to Scotland with friends and on the way back we came through Glencoe and it was it was like something out of a movie. It was very misty and uh, there were the, the mountains and the trees in the background and the mist was just hovering over the road and the trees. And I was sat in the back and, and um, behind the driver and my friend that was sat in the passenger seat was desperate to see a stag. She said, all I want to do is to see a stag. And she was she was looking out. And then partway down the journey, we'd been driving quite a while and, and she started getting distracted and talking and looking on her phone. And then instantaneously, just out of out of the trees came this massive stag with his with his antlers and he stopped turned his head looked straight at us and then turned and went straight back into the forest it was like something off a movie that you would see in the, in a in the movie credits and we just stopped the car and we were like wow did you see that and this this my friend was just like See what what I'm like the massive stag that just came up to the car, and she was like, "No, I missed it. I was too busy on my on my phone," and she'd missed what she was looking for because she got distracted by other things. You know, sometimes we can be like that. We can go through life not aware of what's going on around us. In that story at the beginning, these young men could easily have served that coffee and carried on to the next car in the line. But they didn't, they stopped and they paused, they saw, they had compassion and they acted. Now, there's a definition of compassion. Compassion means to suffer with another person. But this has a very strong personal element to it. It says to have compassion means just more than a feeling sorry for people, more than feeling sorry for someone. It means to get down where they are at in the midst of their need and to suffer with them in the midst of their pain. Another definition of compassion is it's a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. Now, the New Testament Greek is splankni zomai. It means to have the bowels, um, to have the bowels yearn, to feel deep sympathy, to be moved to action, to be moved to one's bowels, hence to move with compassion, to have compassion. But the bowels were where. Um, were thought to be the seat of love and pity. Jesus had compassion. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus had compassion for people, which led to action. In Luke 7 verse 13, it says, um, starting, um, starting from verse 11, it says, Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped, Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Jesus had compassion which led to action. In Mark 1, verse 40, it says, A man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Jesus had compassion and it led to action. In Matthew 14, verse 14, it says, As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed him on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus had compassion, which led to action. In Matthew 15, verse 32, it says, Jesus saw the huge crowd and he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. 
Jesus had compassion and it led to action. You know, Jesus asked us to have compassion also. He was our example. In Matthew 9, verse 35, it says, Jesus travelled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. In Luke 6, it says, love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great and you will, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For he is kind to those who are thankful and wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your father is compassionate. In Colossians 3 verse 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. You know, compassion interrupts our daily lives. Have you ever been somewhere and, and, and or been going about your daily life and the Holy Spirit gives you a prompt and the Holy Spirit speaks to you and asks you to do something? It could be something simple like just um, go and speak to someone or um, just... Um, just go and offer somebody some money that, that, that would pay for their bus fare. Sometimes God gives us divine interruptions, but often we can miss them if we're too busy doing our own thing and going about our daily lives. It's really important that we should be open to the Holy Spirit um, and really aware of the Holy Spirit when we're going around our daily lives um, waiting for that nudge from the Holy Spirit. And when we get that nudge, um, let the Holy Spirit interrupt our daily lives. Let us listen to the Holy Spirit and let us act. You know, the Holy Spirit might give you a nudge in to call someone. Just to say, oh, hi, I've just been thinking about you. Maybe they just needed a friend. Maybe they just needed someone to talk to, someone to touch base with them. Maybe it might be giving a nudge just to, to drop by somebody's house. Maybe it's giving you a nudge just to, to drop just something through the letterbox of some, for somebody. Maybe it's just to give a specific word. I can remember when I was at college and right in front of me there was a, a student from an Asian country and I just got a nudge. It was his birthday. I found out that it was birthday and he was very quiet and he was it, um, at the time and we'd just started college and we'd only been there a few weeks and we hadn't really got to know each other. And I just really got this nudge that we should do, that I should do something special for his birthday. And and so I went and I got some balloons and, and, and some small gifts and, and some cards for everyone to sign. And we decorated his chair in the classroom um, and so when he walked in, he saw his chair decorated and I thought, this is either going to go really badly or really well. Um, because because he was really quiet and shy at that time and a little bit withdrawn. And and I thought, he's either going to run a mile or or it's going to really touch him. And, you know, he came in, he smiled and, and afterwards he talked and, and he came to me and he said, you know, I was ready to quit. I was ready to go home because I felt really homesick and lonely. But when this happened, when all of all of these presents and, and these cards and, and the balloons were there, I knew that, that people loved me and people cared. And so he stayed. You know, that, that guy is doing amazing work. He travelled back to his own home country and he's, he's working really well with a Christian organisation and he's doing some amazing work in that country. That could easily have stopped just because he felt lonely and he felt homesick and he felt that nobody cared. And actually just stepping out and buying a few balloons and, and, a, and, a, and a card and a few, uh, a few presents changed that for him. Nudge from the Holy Spirit. 
you know, I also had a, a nudge once when I was working in a school many years ago and I just had this nudge just to go and speak to a particular teacher one day. And I sat down and I chatted to her and and this person had been having thoughts to, to, to harm herself because of everything that had been going on around her. And that if... I always, it always makes me think, what if I'd not listened? What if I'd not listened to the Holy Spirit and gone and spoke to that person that day? What might have happened? You know, it was so important for me. I could have just packed up. It was, it was time to go home. It was getting near six o'clock and I was tired and I just wanted to go home. But I stopped because I heard, I, I heard that nudge from the Holy Spirit. Just go and speak to that teacher. And, you know, sometimes we get those nudges. And, and God puts us in a place for a specific time and a specific purpose. But sometimes we're caught up with living our lives and doing things and we don't fully hear or we're not aware of what's going on around us. You know, there's a story, it's a very famous story and, and, and it's told in lots of different ways about um, somebody who was um, walking along the beach and they spotted a person in the distance that looked like they were dancing or they were throwing things and and they just watched them for quite a while and as the person who was throwing things came nearer they saw that they were throwing starfish into the water back into the sea and as they walked down and approached this person they said what on earth are you doing and they said well you know look at these thousands of starfish on this beach and this beach goes for miles what had happened is all these starfish had been washed up by the ocean onto the beach. And it's saying it's a little bit foolish. You're trying to throw all these starfish in. What difference is one person going to make when there's thousands of starfish on the beach? The person who was throwing the starfish in picked one starfish in up, threw it as far as he could into the ocean and said, I made a difference to that one starfish. The person who was watching put down his things, joined the other person and started picking up the starfish and one by one they threw the starfish into the sea. It made a difference for that one. Compassion costs us something. In Luke 15 verse 20, starting at 18, it says, I will, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. You know, his father saw him and felt compassion and he ran and embraced him and kissed him. You know, this, um, this verse is significant because... It shows us that compassion is more than just a feeling. It's not just an emotion. It's not just feeling sorry for somebody who's in trouble. Biblical compassion means that you see the problem, you move by the need and you go out to where the problem is. You get your hands dirty and you try to help one person after another get out of their problems and raise them up to a higher level. You know, this can be costly for us. It can cost us time. It can cost us financially. It's sometimes it's not clean. It can get very, very messy in a situation. But this is what we're asked to do. Compassion leads to action. There's a, a, a young woman in Leeds um, who's based at, at, at Bridge Community Church in Leeds. And she's a teacher. And one day in her class, she saw a child and who was finding it difficult to learn. And when she spoke to this child, she realised that he didn't have his own bed to sleep in and that him and his siblings were sleeping um, in very uncomfortable um, situation at home so that they didn't get much sleep on a night and they uh, then couldn't learn during the day. She had compassion on this young child but instead of um, just feeling sorry for this person she decided to act. And she set up a charity called Zarak. And Zarak now is helping hundreds of people in Leeds 
they're going out and they're when they find out that children don't have beds they're providing beds they're providing mattresses they're providing um, all of the bedding the pajamas all the things that a child needs to be able to have a good night's sleep there are lots of families lots of children out there with that need and the charity is out there um, actioning um, the compassion that they had to begin with it costs it costs time it costs money it cost um it cost energy it and and this and this this teacher has got a team around her now and they're making a massive difference to these children's lives compassion led to action and in the town that i grew up they had a statue right in the middle of um in front of the town hall in the in the square of the good samaritan and in luke 10 verses 25 to 37 it's a story of the good samaritan and the Good Samaritan could have um, known, couldn't have known what he was getting himself into when he saw a man that was injured and he crossed the road to help. He didn't stop and say, oh, if I go and help that person, then I'm going to end up paying for his hotel bill and his medical bills and, and it's going to cost me a lot. This man had a choice. He saw somebody in need and he had a choice to walk away or walk past or to stop and help you know he didn't know what was going to be required in the future the only decision he had was should I get involved you know we don't know what having compassion will demand from us and sometimes um, the help we can give will be brief and very easy to do other times we'll discover that the, the demands are long-lasting and sometimes quite heavy to bear and sometimes that we can't always do it by ourselves you know in in the story of the good samaritan that that, that many of you will know then the the samaritan didn't stick around to try and nurse the man back to health himself but he left that to the care of the inn owner and um and the people there and he financially paid for that support you know, sometimes we can't do it by ourselves and sometimes God is just not asking to us. He's just asking us to step out and do something. You know, compassion counts. But true compassion demands action. Compassion changes lives. You know, having compassion on someone doesn't just change the person to whom we're having compassion. It changes the life of those who have the compassion. You know, one of the prayers that, that, that I pray sometimes is make me more compassionate, even if it costs me. Help me to have your heart for others, God. Move me to do something. You know, Jesus had compassion. Let me be compassionate as he was compassionate. You know, when Jesus had compassion, it wasn't a feeling. It was a commitment to get involved with hurting people. And that's what he asks of us. Real compassion is more than just a feeling. Real compassion moves from feeling to action. Compassion is not something that we talk about. It's something that we do. You know, if you want our neighbourhood to be changed, and um, then we have to be compassionate. We have to see the needs of our neighbourhood. We have to see the needs of our neighbours and step in and help them a lot of the time it's hard a lot of the time it's a slow way it takes time it might be a quiet way it might be everything that you do that's unseen it might be difficult but that's sometimes what God is asking us to do to step out be compassionate and to meet a need maybe there are people in your life that only you can give that help to Maybe God's and the Holy Spirit is nudging you. Maybe somebody needs a word of encouragement. And maybe you're the person that can give that to that person when they need it. Maybe there is somebody that's, that's staggering beneath a really heavy load. And you can lift that load and that burden from their shoulders. Maybe someone's just on the verge of quitting. And you're the 
only person or you're the person that the Holy Spirit nudges to go and speak to that person or to go and help them in their situation. Maybe there are people around you that just need a loving arm around them and you're the one that, that, that the Holy Spirit, that God is asking just to give some care and some love to that person. You know, one thing that we can all do is pray that God would give us eyes and ears to see what is needed in our communities and where we are. To give us eyes and ears to see and to hear the real needs of the people that we pass on a daily basis. You know, we can pray that God will bring maybe at least one person across our path who needs help today or help this week. This week, I would challenge you to really be open to the Holy Spirit's whisperings and promptings. And when you go out, say, God, let me hear your voice. Let me hear the nudging from your Holy Spirit. Let me be available to help those in need. Give me for compassion for those around me. And help me not just to have a feeling but convert that feeling of comp that that feeling into action. You know, be that person who cares. Be that person who acts. Be that person who is there. Be that person who sees. Be that person who smiles. Be that person who doesn't walk away. Be that person who doesn't cross the road to avoid, but crosses the road to be there for someone in need you know the closer i get to jesus the less i care about me and the more i care about others this is a prayer that we can pray god help us to have compassion on people and help us to act help us to see what you see father god we thank you that you were compassionate that you met us at our needs. And we pray, God, that you would help us to be a compassionate people, that your church would be a church of compassion. Lord, help us individually to see what you see. Help us, God, as we're going along our daily lives to see those in need and not just to walk by, but to have compassion that leads to action. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, it'd be wonderful if you would like to join us for coffee. We have a coffee time straight after um, the meeting, the talk this morning. All the information that you need is on the slide at the end of the talk. Um, have a fantastic bank holiday. Enjoy your week and we'll see you again here next week.